The next speaker is coming to the podium uh, as the Dean of the Faculty of Lesser Known Arts and Sciences, exploring oddities of the natural world. During the day, she's also Director of Alumni Programs and Services at the University of Calgary, my good friend, Claudia Bustos. I have my emergency lozenge. Okay, let's do this. Let's do it, okay. Okay, so if you're ever asked to speak at uh, Pachaka Chan Night, you might get a text message being like, yo, do you want to speak at Pachaka Chan Night? And I'm like, yes, absolutely. I have so many dorky slide decks ready to go that nobody else cares about. So this is my time, finally. So I am not here representing the University of Calgary in any official capacity because I actually have my own fake university that I run out of my apartment with my um, friends, one of them actually being Dr. Raj Bardwaj and a couple other people in the audience. And we have our own real journal that we put out. We have our own lab notebook. But what I do in my faculty is I am like a huge occult fan. I love the X-Files. And I find witches to be super fascinating. And while that's super fun, I wanted to spend some time chatting with you about some famous witch trials and how witch trials can actually tell us about how society responds to change. So let's do some witch stuff. Whoa. Okay. Whoa, yeah, okay, yeah. So we're gonna hop on our broomsticks and we're gonna go first to Europe. Here we are. So while this is a little bit of a funny talk, it is very unfortunate that this woman here has been forced to disrobe in front of a group of people because they're accusing her of being a witch. In the 1500s, a book called The Witch's Hammer, which sounds super scary, and it's actually a very scary misogynistic book, made all these lists of what could make you be a witch. And to make this feel super official, I found this cool chart from The Economist, because they're a real deal, that talks about witchcraft. But what I really need you to notice is this peak. <laughs> so that's a really important peak right there, because it brings us to the Salem Witch Trials. So we will travel to Massachusetts, which is an exciting place, and we're gonna focus mostly in that little square area that you see up there, specifically on Salem, and we're time traveling to 1692. So let's all make like a time machine sound, like woo! <laughs> That's silly, okay. <laughs> so um, what we need to talk about here is is that first I will channel my inner Malcolm Gladwell, finally, to share a tipping point. So the tipping point of the Salem witch trials was really Mary Webster. So Mary Webster was a badass. She owned property, she had land, she was an independent woman, but they accused her of being crazy, a fiery, too independent. So what happened was she was the tipping point to a the witch trials that happened from 1692 to 1693, where this, like, I was going to say a swear, but I was told this is family friendly, where a woman named Mary Walcott accused a enslaved minority servant of witchcraft. Some of you might recognize her name, and it is Tichuba, which you might recognize from the Crucible. But what I wanted to point out is that frequently in cases of witch trials, it's minority women, powerful women also, literally anyone was being accused of witch trial. So we'll do some brief samples. Who has ever talked to themselves? You're a witch. <laughs> Who has ever like been hard of hearing? Probably a warlock. Do you weigh more than a Bible does? You're a wizard. So there were a lot of different cases that were being used to accuse people of witchcraft. But really what this was being done to do was to marginalize those who were other, those who were seen as different. Are you a person that has some animals, some cats? Crazy cat lady, I mean witch. Same thing according to the, uh, witch, uh, the witch's hammer. Were you a divorced person? Probably a witch. Did you like sex before marriage? Also a witch. But the scary thing was that during the Salem witch trials, luckily no one was actually burned at the stake. That was the European witch trials. But what they would do was dunk you multiple times. And if you didn't drown, you weren't a witch. But if you drowned, oh, sorry. I guess that didn't work out for you. Um, 
But what's sad about this, though, is that I want to bring you back to the story of Mary Webster, because she was actually hung by her neighbors for being accused of being a witch. But the really sad thing here is that this is reminiscent of lynchings that we're all so familiar with, where we're constantly trying to demonize someone as other and taking matters into their own hands. But what's interesting about Mary Webster, and I told you this is like a whirlwind adventure in witchcraft, um, we're bringing it back home on our witchcraft broom, I jumped on my broomstick, um, all the way to Canada, where Margaret Atwood claims to be a descendant of this witch. So if you open up a copy of The Handmaiden's Tale, that book, which deals about women's oppression, is actually dedicated to Mary Webster. So um, after all that like sad stuff, I want to have like a brief uh, Canada heritage moment. Woo! So um, just to bring it back to um, something a little bit more lighthearted, our first prime minister, John A. Macdonald, actually was told by a witch who was not on trial that he would become the prime minister of Canada, which is pretty cool. Elizabeth Barnes, the witch of prime... Uh, of the Witch of Plum Hollow. And in 2017, you could purchase her home that she bought with the money she made from telling fortunes for 25 cents for $249,000, which is like a steal for Eddie Calgarian. So you could have owned her home at that time. If you're like, I'm in Calgary, I'm a little worried about witches still, Rest assured, people, the Criminal Code of Canada actually protects you against fraudulent cases of witchcraft. So um, if you can remember that there are 365 days a year, at the next party you're at, you can be like, yo, Criminal Code 365 protects you against witchcraft. So feel free to use that. But um, while that is kind of great, the scary thing about that, though, is that there are better laws, like fraud, that people could be charged with. So up until 2017, there were individuals in Canada, notably minorities and minority women, that were being accused of witchcraft. But, of course, uh, double-double toil and Trudeau trouble, uh, the Liberal government decided to legalize dueling and witchcraft in 2017. So uh, Wiccans in the audience rejoice. Um, witchcraft did become legalized and while that's all great and dandy the scary part about that is that while we may not have to worry about witchcraft there are still millions of people in Canada and across the world that have to worry about potential witch hunts because they are seen as other thank you very much